My name is Barry Etheridge. I've recently um, been released from the Virginia Department of Corrections. I was granted discretionary parole by the Virginia Parole Board on July 23, 2016. And after doing five months of re-entry, I was finally released on December the 8th, 2016. My experience of the criminal justice system was as a youthful offender. I entered my first Virginia prison when I was 17 years old, even though the night of the crime, I was 16 years old. Um, entering the Virginia prison at 17 years old, wow, when I sit back and I think about that, I think about the fear, I think about the uncertainty, and I didn't know what to expect, you know, out of that circumstance, you know, because I was young, um, and it was just so much uncertainty about my future, you know, how I would fit in, and that's what, what I remember. Once Virginia started sending youth into the adult criminal justice system, what ended up happening is the rights and safeguards that were instilled, installed to protect these youth, I think that they were kind of discarded um, because at that time when I came in, there was really no rehabilitation in the state of Virginia, in the adult criminal justice system. So as a youthful offender, um, when I got sent into there, there was no treatment. Um, we didn't, they didn't even differentiate between a youthful offender and an adult offender. You know, um, I couldn't go to the store and, and purchase cigarettes because I was too young. But other than that, I was just treated the same as if I was an adult offender, even though I was a youthful offender. And because I didn't receive the proper treatment and I wasn't managed properly, I was just sitting there. And when you have youth in the adult criminal justice system just sitting there like that, it's almost like they're being warehoused. The care and attention that's needed, you know, to, to cultivate these youth and prepare them to eventually transition into society, it's not taken. And there is no effectiveness in, in properly managing and dealing with these youth because there is nothing in the adult criminal justice system currently for them. When a youth stays in the juvenile justice system, that youth has access to the proper care that's needed, you know, for that youth. Like I said, the needs of uh, that youthful offender are delicate. And those needs cannot be met in the adult criminal justice system because there are no resources there for them, you know, to fulfill adequately those needs. When it comes to race and ethnicity um, and the role that it plays in the criminal justice system, I think that in certain cases, because of where a person comes from, um, where they are raised, um, their level of education, um, their, you know, family situation, whether they come from a wealthy family that can afford, you know, a lawyer for them when they actually get into a situation or not. In contrast to an individual, when he actually gets in trouble, there is no resources. His family doesn't have any money. His family doesn't have any connections um, to properly aid um, this individual when he, come, he or she comes into contact with the criminal justice system. I think that because people um, don't have access to certain information or certain resources, that once they become ensnared you know, um, in the adult criminal justice system, they don't have that help you know, that they need that can you know, get them the kind of fairness that's needed you know, for their situation. So yes, instead of just locking youth up. Instead of that being the first reaction, I think that there needs to be careful consideration in other alternatives. Whether you identify that this youth needs treatment, whether they suffer from learning disabilities, or if they, you know, have mental illnesses, um, you know, once you determine really, you know, what this youth needs, 
then you can, you know, properly give this youth the adequate care, you know, that's required because we want to treat a sickness, you know, if it's a sickness. And like I say, you know, when it comes to the youth, you know, we want to be, you know, careful and ensure that once a decision is made to punish this youth for the mistakes that was made, then an opportunity will still be afforded to that youth to grow past that mistake or those mistakes that that youth made so that they can eventually realize success. And so we never want to take away the opportunity for success for a youth who makes mistakes.